Hi everyone, this is Sharon. In today's tutorial, we are going to make one of these cigarette cards. I believe it's pronounced quinceitas. Not exactly sure, but in one of my recent videos, I made um, my own version of these and a lot of you asked for tutorials, so I thought we would make a couple of them together today. I put um, a copy of these here so you can see what the originals look like. So they're kind of in a booklet form and the outside looks to me like some type of a card stock and they're advertising their tobacco on the back side. And then um, the flower that they're showcasing on the inside is listed here down below. And then the inside looks something like this. So there's a description of the flower. There's this little insert in this frame that is a silk piece with some embroidery on it. And then this shows that the insert is removable. This looks like the back side of this one. And then there's another further description here of the flower. I got inspired to make these because I saw Pam from Pandora's Junk Journals. Uh, she had some of these originals in one of her videos and I thought, oh, I might wanna order some of those. So I went out and looked for them and they're quite pricey. They're anywhere from five to $20 or more per um, cards. So I thought I'm just going to make my own. So I've got a couple samples that I made up ahead of time that we can take a look at. And we'll make two more uh, on camera today. So I, instead of doing, I'm not advertising for cigarettes or tobacco. So I thought I would just make some really pretty covers on mine. So I've got these. Um, these are from one of uh, a couple of my digital kits in my Etsy shop. They're actually antique French book covers and I just resize them down to these smaller sizes to use. Oh yes, this is the front of this one. It actually has a picture on it. <laughs> and then I resized them down to um, fit these. So for the inside, what I did, well I really got these both upside down. Okay. Oh, I did put that on inside out. Oh, I'll have to redo that. Okay, we'll pretend that's the front. So what I did on the inside of this one is I took another digital of mine, and I'll show you those later. It's actually a seed packet digital. And I did the description of the seeds on this side for this particular flower. Then I just went through my stash and found an old embroidery piece and cut... A little insert to size. This has some pink flowers embroidered on it. And then on this side, I took the front of the seed packet image, this floral, and pasted that inside. Instead of having description on both sides, I actually put the floral image there. And then I created the frame, same as the original in there, to insert this little piece. And then this one, see if I got this one on straight, yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here I've got another description on this side. And then I've got this embroidery piece that I slid in there. And then for this one, I did um, a vegetable instead. Now you can get really creative with these. The originals were florals, but I thought um, in my video where I had the original um, example, I actually did a moth where it had a moth image on this side that was a Nick the Booksmith um, digital. And then it had a description of the moth on this side of the page. So you could do insects, moths, birds, butterflies, trees, whatever you want inside there. I think it would be really fun to try lots of different ones. So I'm going to set those off to the side a little bit and then kind of show you um, the digitals I'll be using for today's. So this is exactly the two um, covers that I used for my examples. So you can see there are these old French book covers. And what I did was I resized these so the originals, I believe, were about one and a half by two inches, and mine are going to be about one and seven eighths by mm, three and an eighth. And you can resize these whatever size you want. If you want to make one that's a little bit larger or even tinier, you could. And what I did was I resized these, and then behind them, I've got this kind of grungy paper-looking image and I did that because when you create these flaps and fold them over, 
I just wanted some type of a little bit of a design on there. I didn't want the stark white. Now, if you don't care about that and you want the white, you don't need a background. Um, or you could use like a lacy background or a linen look or something. You know, how whatever you want on your frame is what you would put there. And then I also backed the same image on the back side so that the inside background um, has something on it as well. And I printed this on kind of a lightweight cardstock. And if you wanted, you could print it on cream cardstock and just leave it plain as well. Whatever, whatever your creativity tells you. <laughs> so that's the cover part of it. And then what I decided to do for mine is I've got this um, antique French seed packet digital in my Etsy shop. And I just thought I would that would work quite well for these. So I'm going to choose this one of the asters today and probably this leek and do those two up. And then as part of that digital, there's also the back side of the seed packet. So I'm going to use that as my description on this left side here. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut out my covers. And in order to get these flaps created around this side of it, I am going to leave a 3 8 inch border around the entire thing. So 3 8 um, is about like that. In centimeters, it might be something more like, I'll probably get this wrong. Um, maybe seven, something like that. Okay, so I'm going to take this to my paper trimmer and I will be back. Okay, I am back with my two covers and as you can see I left the border around the outside of the image. Now I just eyeballed it. It doesn't have to be exact and depending on how thick you want your frame you could make it thinner like a quarter inch. Um, I probably wouldn't go too much more than three eighths because then it kind of impedes on that side. So now I have to decide this one doesn't matter what's top or bottom. So let's just do it this way and what I'm going to do is cut I need to cut out this side because this side doesn't need um, the flaps. So what I'm going to do is first angle this one in like this and also on this side. And then this side I'm going to go straight across and not angle it because you're going to need a little real estate on this corner to um, glue these two together. So I left this side on the right here straight down. And then I'll do the same on the top. So I'm going to go straight across and then angle it over. And then on this side again, angle it. And now we're going to cut this side. Okay, and I think I'll just round my corners a little bit, cut those off so they're not so sharp. And it should look something like this when you're done. And I will also do the same to this one. Okay, we have our two covers cut out and what I think I will do is just do a little inking around these because it is white cardstock you've got that white edge around the outside so I am just going to take a little bit of my gathered twig ink gather twigs and then just do a light little inking around the outside And then I will also do it on the inside. Guess we don't need to do the flaps on the inside. Okay. 
we have our two covers ready to go. Now, make sure I get this one right this time. <laughs> I'm going to flip these over. Oh, I did do that one wrong. I put the... That's what I did last time, too. I put my flaps on the wrong side. They should have been on this side because that's... Okay, what I think I'm going to do then is reverse this one. So I'm going to put my floral on this side and my panel, and then this side will have the description. So that one will just be a little backwards. Okay, this one doesn't matter, so we'll get this one right. This <laughs> will be like this. So I'm sorry to confuse you. So we've got one going each way, but there's always a way out of everything, isn't there? So my next step is to take my inserts and cut those out so I can glue those onto the inside of my covers. Okay, I have my inside images cut and I'm pretty happy with the size of those. You could trim those off to fit however you want them to fit. And now I'm just going to ink those up as well a little bit. Okay, we've got our pieces inked up and now I will glue those down. And I found that it would be easier to glue these in before folding the flaps in. So I'll just get these down. Okay, I have my inside pieces glued in. I just used uh, Scotch Create glue stick to do that. You can, of course, use your glue of choice. Now, our next step is to create the flaps and fold those in and glue those in place. So I think the best method for that would probably be to score them, but since I'm on camera, I am just going to instead use my ruler um, and just Use that as a guide to create my crease. So I've got that flap on the side. And then I'm going to fold this one down. Okay. That looks pretty good. You might have to play around with this angle a little bit to get it to come out where you want it to. Um, I kind of take mine to almost the corner of this one. So it's kind of like a 3 8 inch um, cut inward. And I don't think it, you know, it has to be really precise, but um, just so it's visually pleasing to you. And then here, I think it might be best just for me to look on the outside of my booklet to see where to crease that. And then a bone folder would definitely help since this is cardstock. So I'm just going to take that and maybe give it a crease this way as well so that it bends easily. And then I'll just kind of burnish these down with my bone folder. Okay, and I will do the same for the other one. My backwards one.
Okay, I have both um, of my tabs folded in on both of them. So one thing you want to make sure before you start gluing is to have the side piece underneath the top and bottom because that will give us a little basis here to glue these flaps down to. So our next step is to glue these to create the frame. So this is one seamless frame all the way around. So I kind of eyeball it because you want to get the glue underneath this flap kind of in a triangle shape under here. So it's going to be something like this. I'm using art glitter glue for this because it's it holds really well. And this is kind of a small area. So you don't have a lot of space to put your glue. I'm just going to hold it down for a couple seconds so that will adhere. And then I'll do the same for this corner. This one's really small, so I don't have a lot of space. And you do want to make sure that you don't get too far off your tab, otherwise they will stick down to the bottom section and then you won't be able to slide your um, embroidery piece in there. So I think those are good. I'm just going to make sure that I'm not glued down. That those are open. And you could slide, like a lot of times I'll take a credit card or something and just slide that underneath there when I'm gluing it. And that way you ensure that you're not um, hitting the back side of that. So for example, I would take this card and then slide that under there and then glue. And if there's any glue that seeps, it'll just go onto the card instead of the back side. Okay, so that one's done. Now we'll do this one. And maybe I'll just demonstrate how I do this. Now this one looks like I didn't quite get three eighths of an inch. So that, that gives me um, just not very much room to glue. So I think three eighths is probably a good rule of thumb. Okay, and then I'll slide that down here. Got a lot of extra glue on that one. <laughs> Just hold these in place a little bit. Okay, so we have our little frames. Oh, I didn't fold this one yet. And then I will burnish that with my fingernail because I don't know where I set my bone folder. Okay, so as I mentioned, this one has the frame on this side and this one has the frame on this side and I don't think that really matters. So for our next step, we have to add our inserts. And for these two, what I did was I took another piece of um, this pink embroidery that I used for my example and I'm going to use that to slide into this one. And I pre-cut it to the right size, but what I did to get the right size is to lay this piece onto my embroidery piece and then just take a pencil and tr um, trace around it. And then when I cut it out, I cut it out an eighth of an inch in from my mark on all sides. And that way it just gives you a little wiggle room to slide this in and it's not so tight. And then for this one, I just thought I'd use a piece of lace instead of embroidery. So I had this piece that was about the right width and I just cut that to size and slide that in there and that also Makes a really pretty insert. So uh, that is it. That and other the other thing you could do with your outside is to add some labels or, you know, any kind of other trim you want. Um, but that's what I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I had a lot of fun making these, and I'm as I was making them, I came up with a few other ideas that I variations that I thought would work as well. So. I hope you give it a try and until next time, bye bye.